Action is required now. NASA is facing its most serious medical situation since the start of continuous operations aboard the ISS. Mission timelines are being affected and there is a growing possibility that a return to Earth may be required sooner than expected. Fortunately, SpaceX remains ready to respond when called upon. Next, United Launch Alliance appears to be targeting an early launch of the Vulcan rocket this year. At the same time, China is moving forward with preparations for its Chang'e 7 lunar mission, which is also scheduled for this year. Let's explore all of these developments in today's episode of Great SpaceX. We all know that Crew-11 is a NASA crew currently working aboard the ISS. They arrived at the station on August 1st. Under the standard mission timeline, this means they would not complete their six-month stay until the 1st of February, with their return originally planned for the latter half of February. However, circumstances may now require that schedule to be accelerated. One of the Crew-11 astronauts whose identity has not been disclosed is experiencing a serious medical issue. In a previous update, NASA confirmed that this condition was the reason a planned extravehicular activity was delayed. It now appears that the situation has not been fully resolved, even though NASA continues to report that the crew remains stable. The medical issue in question appears to be one that cannot be properly diagnosed or treated aboard the ISS. NASA Administrator Jared Isaacman addressed this directly, stating, The capability to diagnose and treat this properly does not live on the International Space Station. As a result, NASA leadership has taken important steps to prioritize the health and safety of the astronauts. Speaking about Crew-11, Isaacman explained that, After discussions with Chief Health and Medical Officer Dr. J.D. Polk, and leadership across the agency, I've come to the decision that it's in the best interest of our astronauts to return Crew-11 ahead of their planned departure. Within the coming days, the Dragon Endeavor spacecraft will depart the International Space Station with Commander Zena Cardman, Pilot Mike Fink, Kimya Yui from JAXA, and Oleg Platonov of Roscosmos, and safely return them to Earth. When asked about Crew-12, he emphasized that Crew-12 is currently scheduled to launch as soon as mid-February. Alongside our international and commercial partners, NASA is evaluating their timeline to include earlier launch opportunities. We will provide more information when it's available. Despite the seriousness of the situation, Isaacman also delivered a reassuring message. But it is not uh, an emergency door, but even though we always retain that capability um, and NASA and our partners train for that potential uh, routinely. And then if NASA further clarified that these types of scenarios are extensively rehearsed before every mission. At present, there are two primary scenarios under consideration. In the first scenario, if the medical issue becomes more serious or urgent, Crew-11 would depart the station before Crew-12 arrives. This approach would allow NASA to address the health concern as quickly as possible, while also avoiding the pressure of rushing a replacement crew launch. This option is viable because the International Space Station is currently hosting three members of the Soyuz MS-28 crew, including NASA astronaut Christopher Williams. This arrangement will allow the U.S. to maintain a continuous presence in orbit. While this would place a heavier workload on the remaining crew members, NASA has expressed confidence that they are fully trained to handle such a situation. The second scenario involves maintaining the usual handover process, but shifting the schedule earlier. This option would be considered if the medical issue is not deemed urgent. Under standard procedures, a new crew arrives and completes a transition period before the previous crew returns to Earth. This approach would help reduce the workload on the Soyuz MS-28 crew. However, it would require extremely compressed ground preparations. NASA, its international partners, and the launch provider would need to accelerate astronaut training and mission readiness activities. Even so, this does not mean preparations are starting from scratch. Crew-12 was originally scheduled to launch in mid-February, which means training was already well underway. The current situation simply requires NASA to move faster than planned. At this time, the first scenario appears to be the most likely outcome, with Crew-11 returning sooner than expected, followed by the arrival of Crew-12. Crew-12 will include four astronauts, NASA astronauts Jack Hathaway and Jessica Mir, European Space Agency astronaut Sophie Adeno, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fatiev. Regardless of which path is chosen, the Dragon spacecraft is once again positioned to play a critical role. Crew-11 is flying aboard the Dragon capsule Endeavour, which is now on its sixth mission. 
This exceeds the original design expectation of five flights per Dragon capsule, as jointly estimated by SpaceX and NASA. This milestone highlights Dragon's reliability and SpaceX's confidence in extending the vehicle's operational life. That reliability is especially important at this moment. Dragon is expected to safely return Crew-11 to Earth, reinforcing its reputation as the most dependable crew spacecraft currently in service. This performance further underscores Dragon's advantages when compared to Starliner, while also demonstrating SpaceX's ability to support human spaceflight during unexpected situations. Meanwhile, SpaceX has four additional Dragon capsules available on the ground. Resilience, Endurance, Freedom, and Grace. None has been officially assigned to the Crew-12 mission yet. All four have completed recent crewed missions. Freedom returned from Crew-9 in March of 2025. Endurance returned from Crew-10 in August of 2025. Resilience returned from Fram-2 in April of 2025. And Grace returned from Axiom-4 in July of 2025. Based on this situation, any of the four could theoretically be selected. However, based on sequence and turnaround considerations, Freedom or Resilience appear to be the most likely candidates. Overall, this situation highlights SpaceX's flexibility and high level of readiness. In the coming days, it is possible that a Dragon spacecraft will undergo testing and be rolled to the hangar at Kennedy Space Center in preparation for integration with a Falcon 9 rocket, followed by crew rehearsal activities ahead of launch. SpaceX and Dragon's importance is not limited to upcoming missions. Their role has been clear since the historic launch of Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken to the International Space Station back in 2020. That mission restored independent American access to human spaceflight after nearly a decade of reliance on Russia. Since then, Dragon has consistently demonstrated reliability across both crew and cargo missions, helping NASA maintain stable operations aboard the ISS. To date, Dragon missions have achieved a perfect success record. Without needing spectacle, steady performance alone has established Dragon as the most capable spacecraft currently flying. This distinction is especially evident as other programs have faced challenges. Vehicles such as Cygnus, Starliner, and Dream Chaser have all encountered setbacks. For Starliner and Dream Chaser in particular, expectations were initially very high. However, uneven progress and performance led NASA to revise their contracts, reducing mission counts and tying future flights to the outcomes of additional test missions. In contrast, after completing its originally assigned missions, Dragon has continued to receive new contracts from NASA. Following recent events involving Russia, NASA is even planning to accelerate resupply missions this year, resulting in earlier and more frequent launches to support the station. All of this highlights the central role of SpaceX's Dragon. It delivers operational stability, and it also provides a critical safety net during emergencies. One of the clearest examples was the return of astronauts originally assigned to Starliner after Boeing's spacecraft experienced technical issues and had to return without a crew. Now, Dragon is once again positioned to respond to another unexpected situation. This year, challenges have not been limited to the US. Both Russia and China have also encountered issues that disrupted crewed space missions. If agencies around the world were to consider building a dedicated space rescue capability, SpaceX and Dragon would be the most logical leaders of such an effort. Looking ahead, Ahead, NASA, SpaceX, and international partners are expected to finalize decisions regarding Crew 11's return and Crew 12's launch in the near future. With SpaceX's support, there is strong confidence that all astronauts involved will remain safe, healthy, and able to carry out their missions successfully. Please comment good luck to send your best wishes to the crew, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to continue following SpaceX's journey. Now, let's move on to updates from ULA and its Vulcan rocket. ULA recently announced on X that it plans to begin 2026 with a national security mission. The Vulcan Centaur rocket is scheduled to launch the USS F-87 mission for the U.S. Space Force on February 2nd, lifting off from SLC Comp from SLC-41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The USS F-87 mission will deploy two geosynchronous space situational awareness program satellites known as GSSAP-7 and 8 into near geosynchronous orbit. This flight will mark Vulcan's fourth launch overall and its second national security space launch mission. As such, it represents an important milestone for evaluating whether Vulcan is moving toward a higher operational cadence following years of development and certification delays. The launch will use Vulcan's VC-4S configuration, which includes four solid rocket boosters to provide the additional performance required for a direct insertion toward geosynchronous orbit. This mission takes place during a challenging period for ULA. Vulcan has only flown three times so far, with its most recent launch occurring in August of 2024. That five-month gap highlights the delays that have affected the program. 
During this time, SpaceX has continued to widen the gap in launch cadence and capability, while ULA failed to secure Phase 3 missions under the NSSL program. During Phase 2, ULA was awarded the majority of missions, receiving 25 launches, or approximately 54% of the total. However, Vulcan's delays have prevented many of those missions from being carried out. In the past, ULA relied on Atlas V and Delta IV Heavy as supporting vehicles. One of those rockets has now been retired, and the other is nearing the end of its service life. Vulcan will soon be operating without that backup. Compounding these challenges, the mission coincides with ULA's separation from CEO Tori Bruno. The company now faces a transitional period without a permanent leader in place. As a result, this upcoming launch represents more than just the start of a new year. It's a critical moment for ULA, one that demands faster progress and consistent execution. Success is essential because failure would significantly deepen existing concerns. Finally, let us turn to China's Chang'e 7 mission. China is currently planning to launch Chang'e 7 later this year. The mission will conduct detailed reconnaissance of the moon's south pole using a combination of an orbiter, a lander, a rover, and a highly instrumented lunar hopper designed to search for water. Chang'e 7 will also support the development of the International Lunar Research Station, a joint initiative involving China, Russia, and several other countries that aims to establish a sustained presence near the lunar south pole. The lander is expected to touch down near Shackleton Crater, according to planetary scientist Norbert Shorgover. It will carry an international suite of scientific instruments designed to study the region in detail. If you would like a deeper look at the payload and mission design, comment Let's See It, and we will cover it in a dedicated episode. Chang'e 7 is widely expected to become the first mission to definitively detect water ice at the lunar south pole. Shorgopher has noted, the Chinese will be ahead of everyone else by at least one year, but probably several years. China's progress is therefore drawing significant attention, especially as other nations and organizations have struggled to achieve consistent success with lunar landers in recent years. For the U.S. in particular, this development serves as a clear warning that stronger and more decisive action on the moon may be necessary. Now, all that remains is to watch closely and see how other space-faring nations respond. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.